Welcome to an example of an application of first order differential equations involving electrical circuits. In this video, we'll model an RL circuit using a first order differential equation and then solve an RL circuit problem. The differential equation L times di dt plus R times I equals E of T can be used to model the amount of current I of T in amperes in a circuit containing a resistance R in ohms, inductance L in henrys, and the electromotive force E of T in volts. Another way to say this is, the sum of the voltage drop across the inductor, L times di dt, and the voltage drop across the resistor, R times I, is equal to E of T, often called the impressed voltage. Where again, L is the inductance, R is the resistance, where both L and R are constants, and the current I of T is often called the response of the system. Here's a diagram of a basic RL circuit. Let's take a look at our example. Two nine volt batteries are connected to a series in which the inductance is one fourth Henry and the resistance is eight ohms. We want to determine the current I of T if the initial current is zero. So from this problem, we need to recognize that L is one-fourth Henry, so L is equal to one-fourth. The resistance is eight ohms, so R is equal to eight. And because we have two nine-volt batteries, and two times nine volts is 18 volts, E of T is equal to 18. So this gives us the differential equation, one-fourth times di dt, plus eight I must equal 18. Now this is a linear first order differential equation. So let's go ahead and put this in standard form. So we'll multiply everything by four. So will give us di dt plus, well eight times four is 32. So we'll have 32 I must equal four times 18 is going to be 72. Now because this is a linear first order differential equation, we're gonna go ahead and solve this using an integrating factor where mu of t is gonna be equal to e raised to the power of the integral of 32 dt. Again, this 32 is the function being multiplied by i, or in this case, just the constant 32. So our integrating factor is going to be e raised to the power of 32 t now we'll multiply both sides of this differential equation here by e raised to the power of 32 t. So we'll have e raised to the power of 32 t times di dt plus e to the 32 t times 32 i must equal e to the 32 t times 72. Remember when solving a differential equation using this technique, the left side of this equation, or this side here, is always gonna equal the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and our function i, or i of t. So if the left side of this equation is equal to this derivative here, then this derivative must also equal the right side, or 72 times e raised to the power of 32t. Now we can solve this for i by integrating both sides of the equation with respect to t. Let's do that on the next slide. So now we'll integrate the left side with respect to t and the right side with respect to t. Well, on the left side, the integral and derivative undo each other, leaving us with e raised to the power of 32 t times i. On the right side, we do have to perform a u substitution here, where u is gonna be equal to 32 t so differential u is gonna be equal to 32 dt. So in performing this substitution, notice how we'll have an extra factor of one over 32. So the integral here is going to be 72 divided by 32 times e raised to the power of 32 t plus our constant of integration. And now to solve this for i, we'll divide both sides by e to the power of 32 t. So 
So we have I of t is equal to, this simplifies to one, so I have 72 over 32, which will simplify in the next step, plus c times e raised to the power of negative 32t. And this simplifies to 9 fourths, so we have i of t equals 9 fourths plus c times e raised to the power of negative 32t. Now we'll find the value of our constant. Remember they told us that the initial current was equal to zero, which means i of zero is equal to zero. So we'd have 9 fourths plus c raised to the power of e to the zero, which is just one. This must equal zero. So we have c equals negative 9 fourths. So our function i of t that tells us the current is equal to 9 fourths minus 9 fourths times e raised to the power of negative 32t. So this is the function that we're looking for that will tell us the current at any time t. But there are a couple more things I would like to mention. If this is our function i of t, notice as t approaches infinity, i of t is going to approach this constant 9 fourths because as t approaches infinity, the second term, negative 9 fourths e raised to the power of negative 32 t approaches zero. If you can't see why that's true, we could write this as negative nine divided by four times e raised to the power of 32 t. In this form, you can probably see as t approaches infinity, the denominator increases without bound, and therefore this is going to approach zero. So this term that approaches zero is called the transient term, and the remaining term, nine fourths in this case, is called the steady term. So nine fourth amperes is a steady rate current. Okay, I hope you found this example helpful.